The furniture featured in the Oprah Winfrey interview with Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, is apparently sold out. The furniture, which is from Christopher Knight Brands, sold out after it was displayed during the Sunday night bombshell interview. For those wondering, a set costs about $500. Joining us to discuss this further is Arise correspondent, Arise global correspondent. Here we go. Adifemi Akinsaya. Adifemi, you're welcome. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Before we get into this furniture, I do want to talk about the, the ratings for mm -hmm. this interview. It was, it was huge. I think we have this uh, for our viewers. We're going to take a look at some of these. Adifemi, take us through this ratings. Apparently, this was pretty big with the number of folks that, that, that watched uh, the interview. Indeed. I wonder if we can throw the ratings up there. That being said, I think that it wasn't a surprise that millions upon millions of people tuned in, around 12, that 12 million rather, yes. people tuned in in total. And you break that down to look at uh, how big that is in context. That is the biggest ITV audience. ITV is Channel 3, for people who are old enough to remember Channel 3, <laughs> uh, since the 2019 Rugby World Cup final. And rugby is very important uh, to some People might say it's not as important as football, but in terms of the British audience, it's definitely a big deal, especially the Rugby World Cup final. And of course, Harry and Meghan's Oprah interview uh, amassed a bigger audience than that. 2.2 uh, .2 million people streamed via ITV Hub, which is an app which allows you to watch ITV on demand using your smart devices. Mm. And then when you look at the United States viewers, they average around 17.1 million. So all in all, that's a huge a huge amount of the populace in both countries tuning into this groundbreaking interview. So a whole lot of people will watch you know, a whole lot of interviews Sunday right. and Monday. And since Amazing. Then too. So, so how much of that is the Oprah Winfrey brand versus <clears throat> the controversy with the royal family versus, I don't know, the, the biracial woman that's marrying into this? How much, do you combine all three of those or what? You know, it all what, played what, a massive role in it. Yeah. But I think first and foremost, it was the fact that we were finally having to hear from, for, for lack of a better term, the horse's mouth mm. about the inner workings of their experience at the royal family. So regardless of who was going to interview them, that they were speaking so candidly was always going to bring in a big audience. Now you add Oprah to the mix, one of the most recognizable interviewers in the world, and then again, that just call, creates a, a bigger stir of people wanting to tune in. Mm. For whatever reason they may be, there was always going to be a big audience, and that's why so much money was thrown about from these huge networks wanting to have the exclusive rights to play it. So ITV showed out a hell of a lot of money to, to, to play it out. And then we know that it was a CBS exclusive in terms of where it was first going to be aired. And even though you're looking at the, the numbers of people who watched it on traditional sites, yes. uh, in terms of watching on television or watching it online uh, through legal means, such as the ITV Hub or whatever streaming platforms were showing it, there are also people who were able to tune in the days after on illegal sites or uh, illegal platforms that show on-demand pieces of content. So uh, even though that we can we can quantify these numbers, mm. I, I can imagine that they'd be a lot more in terms of people who didn't use traditional uh, um, platforms that would allow you to quantify quite easily how many people watch. Did you watch it? I, I didn't. I, I didn't. But, but, you know, it's the numbers that are jumping out that, you know, was, and also That's the furniture. That's what caught your attention. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It was the, the figure. Speaking of the numbers. Yes. ITV said... Um, I believe it was 2.1 million people between, between the 16 to 34. 24. 24. Was it 34? I think it was 34. 34, 34. 34, 34, 34, 34. But, but they used they're a sizable youth demographic yes. that tuned in. Yep. So uh, Megan is what? 39, Harry is 36, William mm -hmm. is, I can't remember, William is 30, 38 or so, and, mm -hmm. and Kate is. Or that age too. Yeah. So is, is this, is there. As far as youth interest in the royals going forward, is that demographic youth, I guess, is it locked in? Well, first of all, we're, we're talking about younger members of the royal family anyway. Mm. So that was always going to appeal to a different group of people. Then you have people who are slightly older who have always had an affinity with the monarchy. Then you have people who have always been ride or die hearts for Princess Diana, who are obviously going to tune in. This content itself appealed to so many different people. But traditionally, yes, when you talk about the monarchy over time, perhaps some would make arguments that suggest that the youth are less likely to connect with anything to do with the royal family and the monarchy as an extension of that. But the, the issues here were definitely a lot more modern, speaking openly about race and sexism mm. and family dynamics. That's always going to interest people. But when you look at these uber celebrities, as, as some would put it, talking about a very private experience, it's always going to garner a huge audience. It's never before 
other than Princess Diana sitting down with Martin Bashir right, uh, right. in the late 90s. Uh, did we, have we been able to have access to the royal family like this? Speaking one on one before the interview actually aired, when we were, and they were releasing trailers mm. and teasers, you did have Oprah saying that nothing was out of bounds, nothing was off the table. So that was always going to whet the appetite and have a lot of people tune in. Fantastic. And speaking of a lot of people tuning, I do want to yeah. get to the furniture now. Yeah. How how did we get here? Where you're getting an e-commerce story from? Iroy? I didn't even notice the furniture. I mean, mm -hmm. again, so that's another thing that jumped out at me. Um, how, yeah, how do we get there from a royal interview to furniture selling out? Um, it's about the eyes on the screen, yeah. right? And naturally, in situations where you know you're going to have a huge visual audience, uh, advertising slots, the prices for them go up and up and up. The Super Bowl, for example, right. you know lots of people are going to have their eyes glued. So it's a huge uh, deal if you get your adverts playing during that time. Same with the World Cup final or mm. the Rugby World Cup final. It was. I, I think that for me, as I watched the interview, I definitely wasn't looking at the furniture, but I can understand how people would do. And that being said, as you rightfully put it, those sets of those chairs, those wicker and the Casey chairs that were on uh, on display there that both Meghan and Harry was uh, and Harry and of course Oprah were sitting on. They go for around five hundred and fifty four dollars a set, and they had sold out. So I think that you know, funnily enough, though it is quite surprising, yeah. it isn't it isn't too out of the ordinary that anything would garner people's attention because naturally if Mag Megan's dress for example sold out you, you wouldn't be too surprised or if mm. her shoes or if Harry's suit or Oprah's sweater sold out you'd understand because you have a lot of eyes and not everybody is going to be watching for the same thing so I you know when you look at the chairs they went no no don't want to me yeah, I don't, but if you're saying, saying, they're just if, chairs they look like just chairs but no, no, apparently to I, many people know, they yeah. are chairs that look nice <laughs> right so right they, they'd be happy to pay a thousand dollars well I'd rather five hundred five hundred for two. for for a set. Okay, so as far as I ask you about the, brand, the power of celebrity brands, mm. yesterday we, we, we talked about on the show here, mm -hmm. the um, United States Securities and Exchange Commission said that investors should be wary of investing in SPACs, special purpose acquisition companies and so on. But the, the point is that they said, do not, investors should be wary of just, you know, being sheeple and following celebrities mm -hmm. that promote those investments. So taking that and now bringing it here, Using what's just happened here, it looks like the celebrity brand, when it comes to still being able to hawk products and sell them, even from an interview where it didn't seem so obvious. Yeah. That, yeah. Is that talk about that? That's still. I think what in this the, DNA, what so the SEC is trying to do is trying to protect people from right. unwittingly departing with their fortunes uh, because somebody else told them so, under the premise that that person knows better than them. Mm. It's about education and making sure that people are making wise decisions when it comes to their own money and, and then uh, doing whatever they want to do with it on markets. That being said, this is slightly aside from that. We mm. know that over time there's definitely going to be the pool of celebrity, but I think modern in modern times what we're seeing more often is the, the pool of influence, and anybody can influence anybody for any type of reason. So, right. yes, we're seeing a situation where there were millions upon millions of people watching this interview, and naturally people are going to notice what Megan is wearing on her, on her, around her neck, on her body, what these people are sitting on, where these people are sitting. You know, that was also a, a, a part of the conversation. Where is this interview? being held. Oprah said it was a friend's house, never did disclose that type of information because, again, um, people will be able to dis deduce their different interests from what they're looking at. Yeah. That being said, I think that, yeah, celebrities or people with any type of influence are always going to have some type of effect over people and the things that they want to do with their money, whether or not that's negative or something that uh, perhaps the SEC or any type of uh, watchdog would be wary of is, mm. is you know, it's a bit difficult because you don't want to encroach on other people's you know, free will. If I see something I like on television, just because it's not targeted as an ad, it doesn't mean that I can't be influenced gotcha. and therefore go ahead part with my money to buy it. Real quick, 30 seconds. Mm. Um, 2.1 million people watch this interview on their streaming, ITV Hub streaming services. Yes. Arise Play yes. is launching on Sunday. Yes, uh, March 14th. March 14th. So, uh, uh, big news. Big news. Big news. It's definitely the way content consumption is moving. And you can understand that if you're looking for an alternative to the market that is black-owned, Nigerian-owned, Arise Play is definitely the one for you. Lots of exclusive content on there. Mm. Uh, the Arise Playroom, for example, gives you performances from Artists. musicians and interviews off the back of that. So, it's definitely an exciting time Great for stuff. Arise Play. All right. Defemi Akinsaya, thank you so much for joining us okay. on the Global Business Report.